part one was um, Patchwork Magic Carpet City is a song for Zeppelin vs. Pterodactyls, the movie. The background on the title is, uh, this is supposedly a, a working title for a Hammer Films movie from the 70s. They, someone said, let's do, you know, give me some ideas for movies we can do. Someone suggested Zeppelin vs. Pterodactyls. There's a, a poster that was supposedly made for it of a 30s era Nazi Zeppelin with the little biplanes underneath, fighters hanging from it. And they've, some of them have come loose to attack the pterodactyls. They've blown off course. The basic idea is supposed to be that they get blown off course while trying to bomb Britain and somewhere in the North Sea or wherever the hell they find a lost island of uh, dinosaurs, right? But it doesn't matter how many other dinosaurs are there because it's just the fucking pterodactyls, right? Pterodactyls. Um, I did some research about pterodactyls and uh, also figured out pterodactyls are not classified as dinosaurs. It's going to be in some of the songs calling them dinosaurs. But that's just for the hum humorous effect. Technically, they're not dinosaurs. Uh, they only had wingspans ranging from a few feet to eight feet, smaller than some modern condors and albatrosses. What we actually want to see, what I think would be would look coolest, are Pteranodon longiceps, longiceps, Pteranodon longiceps is the Latin name, which had wingspan about 25 feet, were toothless and had a long pointy skull crest. Uh, Pteranodon sternbergi were larger but had a lame crest that looked like kid and play. Don't want that. Pterodactyl is a term for all short-tailed pterosaurs, which includes genuses, the genuses Pteranodon pterodactylus and Quetzalcoatlus. Notice that Pteranodon is not a specific species either, but a genus. All right, so pedants who, who want to correct me about pterodactyls, I don't care. I'm going to tell you what I'm, I'm actually looking for, and we're going to call them pterodactyls, because that's that's the one that sounds cool. Okay? Ready? Okay. Moving forward. Moving on. So anyway, they, they got to the point in uh, Hammer Films commissioned some artist uh, to do uh, a poster, um, but they didn't go any further. They decided not to do it, or I don't know if the... I don't know the exact circumstances. They, it didn't get made, okay? Um, a couple years ago when I heard the idea, I made a, I took some old clips of like the Lost World, the, the pterodactyl in that, or the pteranodon or whatever the hell, and some Zeppelin footage from Dick Tracy uh, serials, all public domain stuff, I think, and I mashed it together to make a, uh, a 30s version of um, uh, Zeppelin versus pterodactyls. However, so... Here's what we're talking about now, that's all background, what we've got now, I'm giving you a treatment by way of video for Zeppelin vs. Pterodactyls, the musical. I see this, you know, could be Disney, could be uh, uh, a Disney feature cartoon animation, you know, Pixar, we could, get, I'd go for Don Bluth, whatever you got, um, or, or, you know, it's a musical. Musicals are big with the kids these days. I don't know if they, they don't really give a shit about Zeppelins or Pterodactyls, but uh, you know the musicals, they'll swallow it up. Put Zac Efron as the main hero, and uh, it's all uphill from there, baby. You could put Zeppelins, Pterodactyls, uh, Nazi zombies, you know, and uh, they'll eat it up. They'll eat it up. Let's call it uh, high school Zeppelin versus Pterodactyls. No, no, no. Okay, so anyway, actually a cartoon would be cute, but uh, a stage play, I'm also willing to sell out cheap. I'm giving you a, a treatment here, uh, an idea, a basic idea of what I got. I don't have the, the cliche you're supposed to do, like, the graduate meets Porky's by way of Pirates of the Caribbean, okay? As cool as that would sound. Um, I'm not going to refer to other movies exactly to give you a short description, because your fucking description is the title. It's like fucking Snakes on a Plane. It's like Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus, you know? What else can you explain? Once you've got that, once you've got Zeppelin versus Pterodactyls, the musical, you know what you've got. But, okay, so anyhow, so I'm going to give you two songs. That was the first one. Um, Patchwork Magic Carpet City is the first one. Uh, I've got another one coming up and uh, that I'll do in another part. I've got to figure out the guitar part for it. I couldn't figure out how to play, what chords to play for this, for the music of, the, of uh, Patchwork Magic Carpet City. Uh, but anyway, so let me tell you the basic story of of the musical as I see it. It's a rough kind of thing. You got uh, two kids, a young woman and a young man, in their spring before they graduate high school. Okay. 
The young woman is uh, going to become a an aeronautical engineer or something. She can work on planes or any other kind of thing that will fly, that she could uh, get to fly. And so she likes Zeppelins. She likes the dirigibles, the airships, and she feels it's a pity that they nobody's developed them because of the big Hindenburg disaster, uh, maybe because Nazis cornered the market on it in the 30s. Uh, but, the, you know, mainly the Hindenburg disaster. Uh, she thinks it would be an, uh, she studied it and thinks it would be an economical and awesome way of uh, traveling, transporting goods in, in modern times. You can make some really cool modern designs of it. But there's this stigma attached to it because of the Hindenburg. So, set in Michigan. <clears throat> I don't know what school they're from, but they hear about, uh, it doesn't have to be set in Michigan, it could be anywhere else. But the crucial interesting point is the Henry Ford Museum, uh, for the purpose of this story, has a, um, a model, a scale model, of a Zeppelin. Uh, I haven't picked a name for it. Could be an American one. It can't be the Hindenburg. Everybody's fucking fed up with a Hindenburg, okay? Uh, how did you like uh, Sky Captain of the World Tomorrow, Hindenburg 3? Fuck it. No Hindenburg. Whatever it is, it could be an American one. It could be the Graf Zeppelin or something. It's a scale model of some Zeppelin. Um, it's a working scale model, and it's big enough for a crew of two people. So it's, it's supposed to be a model of a kind that's much bigger. I don't know how many, you know, carry 20 or 50 or 100 people, including crew. This one is, uh, looks just like a bigger one. I mean, it's a scale model, uh, manned by a crew of two people, no passengers. And it's just to, uh, you know, a promotional thing so they can have it uh, outside the, uh, maybe circling around Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village. So you get people in, you have some exhibits about airships, right? And you get to see this one flying. Okay, awesome. So, the, our, our aviatrix, she's going to creep into the Henry Ford Museum, or wherever they keep it outside the museum. Let's say it's in the museum, because that makes it cooler. Get a little night in the museum effect. She gets into the museum. She wants to break into the museum, take this thing for a joyride, for as far away as she can get it. And the whole idea is a kind of publicity stunt, an activist kind of thing, in order to promote the the fact that airships are safe. So, they, I mean, this is not, this Zeppelin scale model is made with, like, modern uh, modern designs, probably filled with helium, I assume. I don't, I don't know the, ba I don't need to know the background about this stuff, right? It's powered by dilithium crystals, okay? That's the writing, that's the way you do it. But the point is, so it's modern design, it's not... Uh, so she wants to take it for a steal a fucking thing, take it for a joyride, and uh, get as far you know five hundred to thousand miles across the country as she can. Um, not to not to take it for herself, but so she can land. They can arrest her. And they can say, "What the hell did you do this for?" And she said, Be "To prove two people, two freaking high school kids, can pilot a dirigible safely thousands of miles. You people are stupid if you're not. Uh, you know, whatever. It's, it's dirigibles are safe. Make some dirigibles, you bitches." Or Zeppelins, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Airships. Airships is, is even cuter. Um, she convinces her friend, who is a male. He is also in the spring before his, uh, his high school graduation. Um, they are just friends, and he is painfully aware of that. And he wants to change that. And so he does these kind of things like, okay, we're just friends. We're just going to see a movie. We're just friends, right? He, wants to, he just wants to grow on her, right? He wants, to, wants her to like him eventually. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to steal something. He doesn't want to get arrested. He's hoping that she'll. Uh, I guess they've talked about it, and she's going to deposit him somewhere. Uh, hopefully, so he he won't get caught before they. I don't know, which is unrealistic. But um, he's willing to go on this to make a, a fairly big sacrifice, so that she'll feel like he's made a sacrifice for her. Ah, okay, along the way she can drop uh, pro-airship propaganda pamphlets. Won't that be cute? He's along for the joyride because he's in love, even though she's told him she only wants him as a friend. He hopes that the longer they stay friends and hang out together, the more likely she'll settle for him, even though he doesn't have the grand ambitions that she does, like uh, becoming a... Uh, he wants to become a journalist. She wants to become a... Uh, why is that not a grand ambition? I don't know. But, uh, you know, stealing shit as an activist stunt because you want to be an awesome aeronautical engineer, that's, that's kind of a grand ambition, right? 